Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, please, what I'm sharing with you is very, very important because the seasons we're stepping into are seasons you will need what I'm telling you. You will need what I'm telling you. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make requests for our daily bread? Say with me, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, if we don't straighten out these things, if we don't straighten out these things, God's children will be wasted. But I tell you the truth, the world we have faith in is the giver of life. The one we have faith in, his ministry is a life-giving ministry. It's not a death ministry. He didn't minister death to us. Oh, but Jesus said they will kill you. You see, may the Lord give you understanding. He said they will sentence you to death. Jesus never said they will kill you. Being sentenced to death, meaning what Jesus was communicating to them is it, some of you will get to that point where they will sentence you to death. Because the same Jesus said, not, don't be afraid because not even a hair of your hair will be touched. What do you understand from that statement? Not a hair of your head will be lost. I'm sharing what I'm sharing with you because if your mindset is wrong, the outcome of your decisions, or you, if your mindset is wrong, you'll make wrong decisions. And if you make wrong decisions, now when it matters the most, you'll make wrong decisions. And if you make wrong decisions, the outcome will be wrong. You have a bad testimony. You have a bad testimony. Okay. Peter, according to the history, the story we'll, 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 we've heard. Now, sometimes we still need to find a way to verify some of these things. See, because if you understand the kind of world that they were living in is a world where they want to handle the narrative. They want to handle the story. They want to tell the story the way it would terrify people. So the same way they were trying to eliminate Christians is also the same way they were pushing a narrative. They were pushing an agenda. If they control the media, they will control the narrative. They will control how the story is told. So, we hear all the stories about the disciples and how gruesome they died. And you want to wonder, is this Jesus worth believing or following? Who want to say, now we, 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 we on this side, like we are victims now. So, we want to push another narrative to say, they were faithful to thee. And they didn't spare their lives. But Jesus said, anyone who will not spare his life will gain it. So, if they were not afraid to give up their lives, why did they lose it? See. Okay, so no. They obtained a good report. Okay, now which is a better report? Peter, according to the story, being crucified upside down. Paul, being beheaded. The rest of them, all that testimony. And John, the beloved, who they couldn't kill. 
They couldn't kill him. They couldn't kill John. According to the story, they tried everything to kill him. He would just not die. So they took him and they felt better still, let's fry him alive. So they got this big cauldron, like a big pan, and put poured oil inside and, and, and put the fire on the when it was boiling hot, they threw John in, hoping he would fry. The man was in that oil and he was so comfortable in it. They had to bring him out of frustration. I said, this guy, there's nothing we've thought of that to do to him that is working. So he was banished to the island of Patmos. Now, which is a better testimony? Please judge by yourself. The other disciples, or the, the testimony of the other disciples that died gruesomely, or John's testimony. These people serving the same master. Ask yourself in truth, which testimony would you prefer? See, sometimes let's not lie to ourselves in, in being emotional about what we have believed. What we have believed is truth in itself. We don't have to try to make it look like truth. If it is working, let it work. If it is not working, let it be that it's not working. Truly. So which testimony would you prefer to have? The testimony of the other disciples like it's told. Now, like I said, truly, we need to verify some of these things. Or oh, the testimony of John, the beloved, not John the Baptist now, John the beloved. That till date, there is no, there is no even accurate story about how he died. So it is generally believed he must have died around 92. Because that's about the time they last heard from him. Now there is, there is a story, historical story, that when Constantine came, he was wanted to be sure and so he asked that they open up the the grave of where they claimed they had buried john and they opened up the grave and they didn't even see his bones okay so that's still a mystery so which testimony would you prefer i'm asking you with all sincerity and truth from your heart which testimony would you prefer? Now, why did John have that testimony? Remember, in all, at least Matthew, okay, and John were two disciples that walked with Jesus personally. Luke and Mark didn't walk with Jesus personally, okay? Now, John, in his writing, Stated the things he heard Jesus say. And please understand this. The writings of Matthew and the writings of John were done many years after Jesus left. These writings were done many years after the church had started. They didn't write them before the church started. These were writings that were done many years after. So these writings are the reflections of their heart plus the knowledge they have gained concerning the things Jesus said. So for John to be able to write, read John chapter 6 from verse 53. When John wrote that Jesus said, except you eat my flesh and my blood, you have no life in you. He that eats my flesh and my blood have life in him. I will raise him up at the last day. He said, for my flesh is meat indeed. And my, my, my blood is drink indeed. He said, he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood will not see death. John wrote that Jesus had arguments with the Jews. And he told them, anyone who believes in me will not die. And they just say, look at you. <laughs> what are you talking about? Jesus confessed. J same John wrote because he followed Jesus to raise Lazarus from the dead. 
He wrote and he said to Martha, anyone who believes in me will not die. And he turned to Martha and said, do you believe this? John was clear in his understanding to what Jesus said. So you find him writing those things three good times in his gospel. That's to tell you that those were his contemplations. Those were the things he heard from Jesus and he held on to them. Now, because now this man held on to those things and you find that he could not kill him in fulfillment of the things he said, Jesus said, he believed Jesus. See, we, we, we have not believed Jesus to, you know, like you, you keep hearing me say on this broadcast, we're not here to argue scriptures. We're here to believe them. And if you believe them, let your life show. Let your life be the testimony of what you have believed. When you argue and, and say, no, this is not what he said. This is a, How does it bear fruit in you? This thing is supposed to bear fruit in us. It's not an academic exercise we're doing here. We are showing you the truth and let our lives speak. That these things are true. Everything written here will be fulfilled. Whether you accept it or you don't accept it, everything written here will be fulfilled. Now, John wrote and said, anyone who believes in Jesus will not die. What do you understand from that? Ah, no. You see, he, he is not talking about physical death. He is talking about spiritual death. So be it unto you. That is what you have believed. That is what you will receive. But the one who spoke lived in a season where they were eliminating his colleagues. But they couldn't eliminate him. <clears throat> they couldn't eliminate him. So much so that there is no concrete testimony of how that one died. It's an assumption. Not because anybody was trying to magnify him. No. He believed the things Jesus said. He didn't, he didn't just believe it at the beginning. He held on to it till the end. You may have believed something years ago. But there's a way life will deal with you. And you begin to doubt the things that you have believed before. Brothers and sisters, this thing we hold on to. We are holding it on to the end. We're not holding it for a season. We're holding it on to the end. When challenges come, we hold on to it. When we face obstacles, we hold on to it. We hold on to it. See, we, we are called to bear the testimony of Jesus. So what testimony are you looking at? I'm preaching Jesus. What are you preaching about Jesus? He died, he resurrected to save us. To save us from what? Oh, to save us from our sins. Okay, after we're saved from our sins, what next? Jesus says, so whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, do you understand that? John wrote it too. May God open your understanding in these last days. That your heart will catch the truth of what Jesus meant. I told you some days ago, don't, don't perish with men. Don't follow men and perish. You are called to Jesus Christ. Let Christ speak and minister to your heart. Let's, let's continue. We're reading this Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> Verse 10. He said, and then many will be offended. See, because people are not bearing the right testimony. Now imagine, imagine in those days, the disciples of John, the beloved, 
Imagine how bold those guys would have been watching and seeing the testimony that John was bearing. I want to give the gospel life. I don't want my life to cast doubt on the gospel. Never. 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 Brothers and sisters, never. He came and he copied a cash. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise and deceive many. Can you see? Now, because of all these things that are happening, many false prophets will arise and start deceiving. Because now, now there's confusion everywhere. So everybody will be looking for where to hinge their hope on. Okay. So it's so easy for many false prophets to deceive gullible people. Promise them anything and you will get their attention. Now look at verse 12. Very important. It says, And because lawlessness will abound, Old King James said, Because iniquity will abound, what's going to happen? The love of many will grow cold. Because iniquity, lawlessness, people will do anyhow, behave anyhow and get away with it. Yes. They say, always a way. People will say any kind of thing, behave anyhow, do all kinds of iniquity and nothing will happen before your eyes. Like it's happening now. People say all kinds of things. So I'll stand up and say, hey, God is God. Let this thunder strike me and nothing happens. People will put their hand and do iniquity. They do all manner of evil. You see pastors, you, you hear scandalous things and they're like, huh? Some of you witness terrible things that are done by pastors and say, ha, ah. the next day you see them performing miracles. Say, ah. and, and, and so much so that you begin to think like, ah, I'm confused. Jesus said these words. This thing I'm reading. Because iniquity will abound. Because iniquity will be on the rise. The love of many will wax cool. What does Jesus say? Jesus, remember Jesus, John spoke about Jesus and quoting Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, keep my words. So what did Jesus mean? Iniquity will abound. Many will not keep his word again. That's when he said the love of many will wax cold. He's not talking about people, you know, people will not love again. No. Everybody will become selfish. No, that's not what Jesus was talking about. Jesus said, keepers of his word will drop. Those who keep his word, those who hold on to his testimony will drop. Why? Because their hearts will begin to fail them. Because they see those who don't keep his word. It looks like they are doing well. The wicked is rising. People do ritualists are making money, building the best houses. Um, fraud stars are, are, are just everywhere. They, they seem to be having the best of time. And you look at yourself like, what's the use? Me, I'm here doing things right. I'm here paying my tithe, faithfully calling on the Lord. I, I, I say I will not put my hand into any, any iniquity. Eh? What, has, what, has he, what has he produced in me? I'm still here suffering. Because iniquity will abound. The love, the keepers of his word will reduce. The love will wax cold. So many, many will stop keeping his word. So when you look around you and nobody seems to be keeping the word of God. You know, these days, these days we, we have more of uh, preachers who do more of advising than preaching the word of God. You know that, right? We have preachers who deal more on life issues. Truly, truly. We, we have more preachers dealing with life issues. So we, we find people who deal more on relationships, marriage, how to be successful in business, how to behave well, how to, you know, all those things, you know. Fantastic, okay? But then you notice that the, those who teach the word for what it is, they are reducing. They are reducing. 
If we don't teach the word of God, we'll have less people who will keep the word of God. Why do I teach what I'm teaching? So you keep. See, that's the whole essence. So you keep. Why am I sharing the things I'm sharing with you? So when you face challenge, instead of giving up and say, if it is the will of God, let them kill me. That's not the will of God. That's not the word of God. The word of God says, I am come that you have life and have it in abundance. I'm saying this situation when you face life and death situation, you will hold on to life and say, Lord Jesus, I know you will not abandon me. So then the question will come into you. So what do I do now? Brothers and sisters, the Lord in that hour will tell you exactly what to do. And whatever he tells you, be bold to do it. I've shared this many times. No, that was the, the closest um, situation I have had in my life. We are arrested, about to be locked up because we're praying somewhere. Myself and two others. My wife was there many years ago because she was my daughter then and, and we with, with, with another brother. We're praying and these men came with guns, these dang guns. And Well, finally we landed at the, the school security um, office and then they, they began to say, we'll have to stay behind the counter till morning. This was about 1 a.m. In the, in, the, in the morning. So we have to stay behind the counter. And, <laughs> and now we're, we're trying to explain to them calmly, look, we're students, you know, and then when they now, they said it at first, you have to stay behind the counter until morning. I'm like, really? For serving the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what came up in my heart. I didn't argue with them. I turned to the Lord because it got to a point they, they began to push us to go behind the counter. And I said, Lord, I can't, I can't do this and suffer this in the hands of these men. Then the word of the Lord came. So what I'm preaching to you, I'm not preaching to you fairy tales. Then the word of the Lord came to me immediately. And he said, go home. That's all I had. Go home. And when I had go, now these men were already pushing us. When I had go home, I wiggled myself from the house and I told the other two, let's go. Follow me. Let's go. And they followed me. We walked through those men. Now these were men that were pushing us to go behind. We walked, we just turned and walked through them and left. No one said a word. You tell me Jesus doesn't save in situations like that, I'll throw my testimony out. Now, this is not what I heard. This is what I faced. This is me. Not, I was not the only one. We we're three of us. The people, they are all still alive. The Lord said, go home. Now you imagine, you are being pushed by security officer. You are being pushed to go behind the counter. And then the Lord is telling you, go. He didn't say, I'll fight for you. He didn't say, I'll. He said, go home. And when he says go, don't start saying, okay, sirs, uh, please, can I say something? The Lord said, go home. When he said go home, go home. Now, notice, I will tell you the truth. Another believer could have gone, slept there, morning, go back, and tell the testimony, oh, we slept behind the counter because of the name of Jesus. Not me. You see where the difference is? It's not in Jesus. Our time is up. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.